My name is Lamar Lemons, and I'm the president of the Detroit Board of Education. And um, we're going to start with uh, Helen, who's going, Helen Moore, who's mm -hmm. going to make an announcement while we get prepared. Okay, I'm Helen Moore, and I'm an activist in the Detroit Public School System, and I filed a Title VI complaint on behalf of the students and the parents in the public schools. It deals with uh, the fact that there's discrimination going on with all of us. People are dealing with us in not the right way, and because we are in a predominantly black district, we're getting the worst of everything. Just like today, we should not have to break in to our schools in order to have a meeting. The schools belong to us, and the children are our children, and we pay the taxes. But these folks are taking all our power from the board and from uh, the citizens, and we're standing up. So next week, the Title uh, VI complaint has been made. We've been to Washington, D.C., we've been to Chicago, and we have 16 districts, just like Detroit, that are part of this coalition. Next week on Thursday, Peter Cunningham from the President's office is coming in here. He will be talking to us about what happens when they close schools, how the community goes down, how the people move out, and he wants to see examples of that. So he's coming in. We may have people from the Civil Rights uh, Commission. We may have people from any of the other departments of the president coming next week on the 30th. When we finish taking him on a tour, then he'll be able to go to the city county building in the auditorium and the people will have a town hall meeting. All this publicity will come out after today as soon as Joanne Watson uh, uh, assures us that we can have the meeting in the city count, county building. So now, what is going to happen? Some of you may want to sign up with me because you want to get on the bus with the people from Washington, D.C. and tell your story because your school is closing and the community always goes down when schools close and we're trying to stop that. The other thing is we have organized going to Washington, D.C. for the Black Caucus that is on the 20th. We'll be leaving here on the 19th, taking our students and parents, meeting up together with people from Baltimore, Philadelphia, Mississippi, Kansas. We're all gonna meet up together and we're gonna protest and tell these people no more discriminating against us, no more treating us differently. We want you to know today that this has got to stop. Now we have the attention of the President of the United States of America, but they just told me last night, today on the conference call, that it's very difficult to get people to come out because of the election and all the things that's happened. We have assured him that we come first. We come first as community, as parents, teachers, people who pay taxes, and our children come first. Amen. So that's what we're going to be about in the, next, in the next month. First thing is the 30th. Now tomorrow we're having a call meeting for my group called Keep the Vote, No Takeover. If you want to attend, it's at the Dexter Elmhurst Center at 6 o'clock. And it is an emergency meeting on all this going on. And we hope that you will attend. And I'm glad you're here today. Thank you very much. Uh, next, I will bring up and introduce our, our new superintendent of academics for Detroit Public Schools, Dr. John Telford. All right. Hi, folks. Telford, T-E-L-F-O-R-D. Tomorrow, uh, we're having a board meeting. That should have happened today, uh, but for some reason, uh, uh, the emergency financial manager uh, presumed he had the authority to, uh, to tell us we couldn't meet. Uh, I'm really not sure even why he did that, but he did it. Uh, and, and Mr. Lemons, uh, who is our board president, and uh, some of the board members have been in, uh, in, in uh, conversation with uh, legal advisement, and uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Roberts kind of backed down, so we are having the meeting. And I guess he backed down to the point where we opened the, the, 
building today. But I'm going to, I'm go you're getting a preview, because this is something that I'm going to share uh, with the board tomorrow. Uh, I, have, uh, I have asked uh, Mr. Steve Wasco, uh, who is our communications uh, fellow, uh, to, uh, to put this out to all staff, you know, teachers, custodians, uh, principals, everybody. Uh, whether or not he does so is up to him. You know, hopefully he will, or, or, or he will uh, be uh, risking being insubordinate. But uh, this, is, uh, this is the communication that is going out to staff. So you're getting this preview. Uh, it's from me, uh, as superintendent of academics, and the subject is general announcement. As school is about to open, it has been no secret that the emergency financial manager on one side and the duly elected and recently re-empowered Board of Education and the superintendent on the other have been frequently entangled in lavishly publicized legal and political wrangling over which one of us Roy Roberts as Emergency Financial Manager, or I as Superintendent of Academics, has authority over which DPS departments. That's what we've been fighting about, uh, one of the things. Uh, these disagreements have now even extended again to whether the two of us have joint administrative authority over all physical facilities, and that's why, you know, he wouldn't let us uh, meet here today, and we have that to move the meeting to tomorrow, uh, specifically including school buildings. Uh, Wayne County Circuit Court Judge John Murphy has put me in charge of all things academic, and he has put Mr. Roberts in charge of all things financial, uh, because he had to do that, you know, based on, uh, on the governor's uh, wish to have an emergency financial manager in here, which we really don't need. You know, we ought to be allowed to, uh, to run our, our show, and, and Lansing needs to clean up its own mess, because they, they created this problem. The judge ordered me and Mr. Roberts to collaborate and administer Detroit Public Schools in the best interest of our students until we defeat uh, Public Act 4 in November. Uh, and this is exactly what I, for my part, have been trying very hard to do. And this is what I intend to continue to do. Uh, I, I expect all, this, this is what I'm, I'm saying to staff, this is supposed to go out to staff. I expect all schools to open on time and to open appropriately staffed, and we pray that they're going to do that. And I expect the Division of Instruction's academic plan will be followed to the letter in all classrooms. It's an excellent academic plan, I might say. A lady named Barbara Bird Bennett wrote that plan two years ago. It's a super plan. Accordingly, all of the following will be promptly forwarded to Judge John Murphy for his review and approval. In compliance with the Honorable John Murphy's ruling, it must now remain my legal uh, as well as logical uh, expectation that all academic administrative personnel are to report exclusively to me. That's academic, you know, it's my side of the house. These personnel specifically include Dr. Karen Ridgway, Mr. Doug Ross, and any and all academic administrators over whom they have direct or indirect insight. Thus, the staff who occupy the cited positions include all of the assistant superintendents, principals, assistant principals, subject area coordinators, and supervisors, the district athletic director, security and attendance staff, parent community liaison, et cetera. In other words, this is a school district, right? It's not a storm door factory. So it, the, 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 the academic folks need to report to the superintendent, as, as they do in any other district. And as Amen. they all did in Detroit before they started meddling uh, with, 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 our, with our school district. Uh, <laughs> well, okay, the Board of Education has now directed me to inform all DPS staff that either the board members or I will be the only individuals to correspond and interact with the emergency financial manager, uh, with the exception of staff, you know, whose job descriptions are clearly financial and only financial. Uh, the board and I are the exclusive conduit between the Office of Emergency Financial Manager and all instructional or, or instruction-related personnel. Some departments uh, to include, but not to be limited to, human resources, communications, general counsel, facilities, and instructional technology will have dual reporting, because he does have some input there and should have some input there, but I must too. Let me emphasize that we do not wish to distract the emergency financial manager from his foremost role and responsibility of rectifying the financial emergency. That's his only job. That's right. His only job. Only job. I trust that Mr. Roberts is continuing to work very hard to eliminate the deficit, and I have begun to work just as hard administrating the academic side of the house. 
I intend to meet with every principal and be in every EPS school within the months to come. So that's the last sentence. Let us put any and all of our differences aside and join hands now in total unity to ensure the successful opening of school on September the 4th. And let us all continue to focus entirely on offering the very best education to our children.